tomorrow's broadcasting stars today. Broadcasting live from the campus of Syracuse University, this is Newhouse Afternoon. Welcome into Newhouse Afternoon, everyone, alongside Max Gifford. I'm Nico Horning for one final time. Well, now welcome into Newhouse This semester. Afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were yeah. a little bit early. We were early. We were early. We were, you know, we were, we were too excited about this show. It's our last one. That's fair. We got a lot to talk about today. We got some men's basketball talk for Syracuse. The Masters kick off today. We're excited about that. We can go over our predictions when we get to that point. Uh, we're now just realizing that people our age are making it to Major League Baseball, which is a weird thing to think about. It's a sad feeling, isn't it? it? it is yeah. my, my dreams are my dreams are gone do you think you've accomplished anything in your life no <laughs> no <laughs> not, not at this point oh my goodness as a as a as a cardinals fan that you are we'll get into this real quick you know you watched matt holiday growing up and now you got his son playing 10 years ago he would be in the starting lineup matt holiday would be in the starting lineup every day and i would watch him but now the fact that his son is playing and the fact that I think they showed a stat last night that the last time Craig Kimbrell faced Matt Holliday, he gave up a home run to him at Fenway Park. Fast forward to, fast forward to I guess now, he got the save in Jackson Holliday's first start. So kudos to Craig Kimbrell, I guess, for you know being a part of that history. But that's just crazy to think about. A, how long Matt Holiday was around the game, mm-hmm. and B, how good Jackson Holiday is as, at such a young age in his career to jump all the way up to the majors so early. And Craig Kimbrell is actually on my fantasy team uh, as well, so I got that connection with him. But no, that's a, that's a crazy story, and you know, just to think about other people our age, like getting to that level already, we're we're just here uh, at school seeing these guys get to the MLB is just a weird, weird feeling. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, again. Our, our last show today so we're just going to kind of go a little bit all around the board we'll save some of our best moments of the year at the end of things as well so uh should be a great last hour here on newhouse afternoon thanks so much for joining us on q sports talk and espn radio as well we had uh, some some breaking news yesterday about a new syracuse men's basketball assistant coach uh, dan engelstad has been uh, hired for the opening that vacant position that Jerry McNamara left uh, to go to Siena for as uh, their ho- their head coach. So uh, that spot, Coach Autry has been trying to fill for a couple weeks, and they bring in uh, Dan Engelstad from Mount St. Mary's. He was the head coach there for a few years. And uh, your initial thoughts uh, yesterday, Max, if any. My, fir- qu- my first question for you is, Nico, sure. do you know where Mount St. Mary's is? Uh, I want to say New Jersey. Maryland. Uh, New Jersey. Maryland. 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 Okay. You're right there. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was the first question. Second question I'm going to ask. Do you know Mount St. Mary's mascot? Mountaineers. I don't know the mascot. I just know that the, they're called the Mountaineers is their team name. Okay. There you go. But their mascot, like what the name of the mascot is or like what it looks like? No. What they're, yeah. No, you got it right. Mountaineers. Mountaineers? Yeah. But what is the mascot? No, you, do you know what the mascot no, is? Th- no, that, that's what I was that asking. That was your question. That's okay. what, that, that's what well, I Well, now I'm curious mascot. what their mascot is. I have no idea what the actual <laughs> mascot is. Um, anyways, yeah, I mean, he had an NCAA tournament appearance three years ago, and I think Autry was looking for someone that would bring experience in. You know, you, you talk about a discrepancy of schools, I, I, you know, to a certain standpoint, right? This guy... I think he coached at wait, Southern Vermont. Is that the school? He, he coached at a D3 school for six years uh, before going to Mount St. Mary's. And you make that jump to Mount St. Mary's. You're there for a few years. You make an NCAA tournament. Now you're taking a bit of a step back going to assistant role, but you're taking a step up as far as, you know, what teams you play by going to Syracuse. And um, I, I think off the resume, it's a good hire because you want experience. You want someone that's been there, which he has, and um, maybe he can bring some of that experience to his players. Well, it's something we haven't seen as a part of this 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 Cuse men's basketball staff. A lot of the players are homegrown or grew up as members of the team. I look at guys like used to be Jerry McNamara, Alan Griffith, Adrian Autry, also players, former players, all under Jim Beheim, who is also a former player. Right. This is one of the first times we've seen Syracuse hire someone who didn't play for the team. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I think it's a great move to go outside of your bubble. Which is important today in college basketball. Exactly. Go outside your bubble. Now, I'm not saying that Syracuse needs to be Arkansas and go get John Calipari, but <laughs> I think it's important that you know you don't just stay 
with your former players. Don't just stay within this Syracuse bubble or this alumni bubble to only figure out, you know, these are the only people that can really understand what orange basketball is or understand what the Syracuse mindset is for basketball. No, I think there are people that provide a lot of valuable experience. And I think for Syracuse, your goal right now, especially going into next year, is to make the NCAA tournament. That's and, that's the whole theme of the, the right, game right now. And right now, no one on that staff has any experience in the NCAA tournament. Well, you got one. So, uh, no, I, I think you're right, right? I mean, we look at the different options that Syracuse could have brought in, and to me, it doesn't make sense to just stick inside your bubble because, you know, I, I everyone loves each other at Syracuse. I get that part, but at some point, you know, basketball's played at a lot of other places in the country and especially in the world, and it's like – you know, why not venture outside a little bit, see what other people have to bring to the table, not to mention the fact that he made March Madness, so he's been there, done that. And I really like the move as far as an experiential standpoint and not con- and not going back to that Syracuse bubble that you have to stay in to bring someone into your program. No, I absolutely so, – no. I think we agree I, I on that, right? I, I think we absolutely agree. Yeah. But – just about, I, I would say maybe half an hour after that news broke, maybe it was about an hour. Sure. I guess, I I, 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 I don't know if people can say this was a snowball effect, but uh, the, the next thing you know, Munir Hima, yep. the, Q's mo- the Q's most veteranized player, transfers out, honored on senior day this year, but now he's in the transfer portal, according to On3 Sports. Does that change anything about this team? Just to, N- just no. to be completely honest. No. Um, I think he was leaving because of uh, Lampkin that they brought in at the center position. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I'm going with this. I, 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 why would he leave because they bring him in? Is that just... What do, you, do you have anything no, on that? Like, no, no I, I was just kind of, I was just kind of making it a joke because okay, it just happened. Okay. I, I know, I get it. I get it. They just happened to be so simultaneous. Yeah, it was, uh, it was weird timing, and I actually missed the HEMA news because of the the new assistant coach uh, transfer. I, I saw it this morning. Maybe I saw it later last night, but um, yeah, it, it was weird timing for sure. Um, as far as HEMA leaving, I mean, to me, it entirely has to do with Eddie Lampkin coming in as as the new center for uh, Syracuse and. I, uh, I wrote about this not too long ago, actually, with, with Eddie Lampkin, is, you know, some people have harped on his defense, but to me, the most important thing for this team was finding a center early on in the offseason. They did that. Now you can build around him, see what happens from here. We know Judah Mintz isn't coming back. So and let's not forget, you still have Naheem McLeod in the fold. I'm not saying that Naheem is your number one center, but you still have him as a viable secondary option. Mun- viable. But it's viable. Well, I don't know if he's viable. He might. That, that's a question. Uh, that's a question. I, I would. He say got hurt, but he was. He was never. He, more, he didn't impress me that much. More, to be vi- with more viable than Muni or Hema. Yes, correct. Okay, correct. That's what I'm but saying. Not, but not. But, but him. Him purely yeah. is not viable. But my point and what I'm saying is, you you would not say that Munir was a viable option for this, no. for this team. I do think Eddie Lampkin is going to be a viable option. For this team, well, he's going to start for this team, right? So exactly, he better. I was going to say he he'd better be a. But again, McLeod started last then. year. I, my point is, we've gone, for, we we've upgraded McLeod to uh, Lampkin. I, I think, I hopefully, we can all agree on that because McLeod, you know, as as tall as the guy was, he didn't impress too much um, as far as a normal center that you'd want to see going forward. And I think Lampkin can bring some stability. Another guy that brings in NCAA tournament experience. He just went to the went to March Madness with Colorado. So you bring in two new guys that just went to uh, the tournament here recently. And uh, I don't think you can complain too much about that. But the whole point of this is you got a center early on. Now you can build around him. You bring in an assistant coach that also has experience, and you see what happens going forward. And you seem to be noticing a trend with all these additions. Tournament experience. Yes. Tournament experience. Let's keep it going. That's what you want. Let's keep it That's going. It, eventually, want. everyone they bring in is going to have a, a March Madness you know, spot under the resume, and then eventually Syracuse will get back to March Madness. Is that right? That's the goal. It, is it bad <laughs> at all, though, that this is the point where Syracuse basketball is at, that we just have to get experience from the NCAA tournament? It's the new. Is it the new normal? I mean, but 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 to be fair, when you had a coach like Jim Beheim, mm-hmm. like no one had more experience in the tournament than he did. So I guess you can really, not necessarily never come back from that. But if you're a guy like Beheim, you know you're really the only one with most of that experience. Sure, you've got Autry for you've got Autry for a couple tournaments, but Beheim had the most of almost anyone in college basketball for sure. And you know, at the end of the day, I think everyone forgets that Autry's had one season under his belt. And they still 
made it relevant down the stretch to at least have a shot at the tournament. So uh, I know I, I'm excited for the future of this men's basketball team, and uh, we'll see what happens. But again, some uh, some news that keeps coming out and some excitement going forward. So a lot to look out for throughout the summer and going into next season for Syracuse men's basketball. Uh, with that, we're going to take a uh, step aside here on Newhouse Afternoon and uh, preview the Masters coming up. Uh, we're excited about the big golf tournament, as everyone is, and we'll give you some picks on the other side. You're listening to Newhouse Afternoon on Q Sports Talk and ESPN Syracuse.